26. Disagreements are inevitable between parents and children, don't we know it? But for our next guests, their differences in opinion couldn't be more personal. Bake Off star Prue Lee is vocal in her support for assisted dying after her brother passed away from bone cancer in 2012. Despite this, Prue's son, who's a Tory MP, Danny Kruger, is strongly against assisted dying. Now, the pair have embarked on a very unusual adventure together, all in a bid for better understanding of the issue. I'm not such a big fan of letting doctors give lethal drugs to sick people. So we can find some common ground, Mum's convinced me to come on a road trip to where assisted suicide is legal. Do you know, darling, I am so surprised that you agreed to do this because I know why I'm doing it. Yes. I don't know why you're doing it. Well, I'm doing it because I, I want to show you why you're wrong. And uh... <laughs> I don't like disagreeing with anybody, but I think this is so important I have to disagree, and especially with my son. Pruleith joins us live from the Cotswolds while her son MP Danny Kruger is here in the studio. Uh, let's start with you, Pru. I um, watched the documentary last night. I've got to say, I really, really think it is brilliant and powerful and the balance you bring to this interview um, and your relationship with Danny is very, very strong. But the interesting thing to me is you both end the programme where you start still disagreeing? Yes, we do. Um, I don't think either of us really thought we would change each other's minds. Um, I certainly didn't. I mean, I still feel that the, that the law as it stands is um, just dreadful for dying people. They, they often face, thousands of them face a horrible death every year. And what choice do they have? They can commit suicide, which is perfectly legal. They can put up with it, just suffer, or they can go to Switzerland, which is expensive and very few people can afford it. And who wants to go to Switzerland to die? So we are, at the moment, the, war, the, the law just isn't working and we should change it. Um, Prue, um, we mentioned in the introduction to you um, that uh, you were spurred on to be interested in this issue because you saw your brother suffer. Uh, and I think that often people do, do need to have a very personal experience, don't they, to, for it to come home as to... Because on the face of it, it, it you know, like your, your son is a politician, like, you know, Ed, feel, it's, a, it's a very difficult thing to have policy over, very difficult to make the law work so that people are kept safe and that nobody's coerced mm. into this. But I think your uh, view is one that I think many viewers will understand once they know about your brother. I think that's true. I think uh, many, many people um, have come to the conclusion that we have to allow um, help for people who want to die. Um, dying people who already want to die, who want to die. But I um, mean, the Archbishop Carey um, came to that conclusion um, only, I think, when he saw his mother die. I think if you see people in agony, and it's interesting that, that more nurses than doctors um, support our side of the argument because they are the ones that see the agony of dying. Doctors have generally, you know, do their rounds when everybody is full of drugs and feels fine, and they don't see the dying. The nurses do. And Danny, what I found fascinating, of course, was that you you travel the world in this in this documentary and you go to Canada. Now, everything that's Prue saying, you your mum, you say in the thing, let's just take a look at how it works in practice. Yeah. It's very hard yeah. to do that anyway. Yeah. You go to Canada. Uh, tell us a bit about the, the system there and what you found and why it, it confirmed your view that this is actually very slippery slope. Yes, it did. And the danger is that because we all have... Now, and I have complete understanding and sympathy for my mum's point of view and people who've had their loved ones die badly often feel that it shouldn't have been like that and it shouldn't have been like that. And we can talk about the alternative. But in Canada, they came to this conclusion too and they decided to legalise assisted dying With about six years place. ago. So two doctors have to, start, have to give... We have to sign a form saying that you are in foreseeable, reasonably foreseeable death, so you know, you're terminally ill. In practice, it's impossible to define when somebody has a reasonably foreseeable death. Doctors can't predict exactly when you're going to die. So all you need to do is to persuade two doctors that you are, uh, you are, Ill, you are Ill enough for them to conclude that your death is reasonably foreseeable. And the fact is you can shop around, which is exactly what happens in Canada, until you find a doctor prepared to do this. And so what we have in Canada, and we met doctors who confirmed this, Many, many patients who are disabled, who are 
mentally unwell, who have conditions that we would all regard as actually quite manageable, including anorexia, eating disorders, people with hernias, people with difficult, very painful conditions, but ones that do not require you to, you know, don't, wouldn't, most people wouldn't think you should be dying soon from them, can get a doctor to confirm that they need euthanasia. And thousands and thousands of people, the vulnerable, the lonely, those who feel a burden on their families or on the healthcare system, are being pushed down this route. And that is my concern. I have huge or sympathy. Or they're pushing themselves well, down they the are, Well, you say that, but you know, how, how independent are you when you're terrified, ill, lonely? Uh, mm. and, and neglected. There's a chilling moment in the, in the film I saw mm. about the Canada experience. Um, I hadn't realised that since, I think it's 2016, mm. 10,000 people have now um, ha yes, taken well, their lives. 5% of all deaths every year are, are through it's this. Big numbers. Canada, yeah. And there's this the footage you watched with Prue, which was secretly filmed of a doctor talking to a man with a disability. And he was complaining or worrying about the state of his care yes. and saying that it made him feel, you know, like, was life worth living? Yeah. And at that point, the, the, the expert says, well, of course, you could always solve that That's by right. taking your own life. That's right, and we will arrange that for you. And then this happens a lot. I mean, there are, there's a veteran Paralympian, a disabled uh, former soldier, who, who just what she needed was a wheelchair ramp for her home, but the state wouldn't pay for that because of the healthcare funding system. But what they would be prepared to offer her was, and they did, was an assisted death. And Prue, uh, you know, uh, and you talk about that chilling moment, the chilling moment for me was when you spoke to a former war correspondent who had suffered with depression and post-traumatic stress for many, many years, and the idea that it would be extended to people with mental health problems. We talk about teenagers in this country, Prue. Wasn't that a moment for you? The thought of, say, if my 19-year-old son but, felt but, very unwell mentally for a year but, and this was available to him, that is the moment where I maybe yes, fork off from but, your but, point but, of but, view. But, well, the thing to remember is we are not trying to adopt the Canadian system. Nobody has proposed that for Britain. We're not campaigning for their system. Mm. We're campaigning for something rather more cl closer to what they've been doing in Oregon mm. for 25 years with no problems whatever. And, you know, one of the things that you really need to think about is that many, many countries now have an assisted dying system of one sort or other. Whatever they have chosen, they have never repealed that law. Now, if there was real problems with it, would not there be an outcry in that country, we should repeal this mm. law? There's no such thing. None of, nobody who does it wants to repeal well, it. I have and to yes, say... more people take that route because no people need it. But Danny, it's a fantastic the, 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 uh, documentary, actually. I have the criticism of you, Danny, is that you say, if my mum wants that, that should be her choice. Mm. But as a legislator, an MP, you are not willing to allow people who haven't got the money to go to Switzerland to have a choice which you would have for your mum. So are you well, not showing double standards Well, there? just because some people can afford to go abroad to do something that's illegal in this country, we shouldn't legalise it here for that reason. My mum mentions Oregon. I mean, in Oregon, the examples I mentioned, people with anorexia, people with hernias, people with diabetes, yeah. it's happening there. There is not a single country in the world which is doing this right, which is why my mum and other campaigners say we've got to do it for ourselves. Well, that's fine, but 27 countries have tried it. We don't like any of their systems because any system yeah. that, legal, that says to the, the state can decide that yeah, someone's better of off dead well, and I have will to be say, dangerous. We're going to have to end it there. I mean, this documentary is absolutely brilliant. You know, I couldn't take my eyes off it yesterday. But what you show, I mean, we're talking about Nicola Sturgeon talking about the polarising nature of politics. Yeah. What you really show in those, you can disagree really well and you and that, I thought that was it was such a brilliant I would really recommend it highly this documentary I uh, would. thank you to both of you for bringing it thank uh, you. and he's saying good morning Bye, to your mum <laughs> yeah I'll see you later she's on she's on a doing a tour nice of, 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 of England's yeah. theatres and I'm seeing her tonight in yeah. we haven't kept you separate because well, you've fallen yeah. out by the way yeah, it was just place. a location meanwhile issue. if you're not <laughs> going to see Prue in a theatre you can watch um, Danny and Prue's programme at nine o'clock on channel four uh, this evening I've got to say it is really it's really good if you want to understand this watch. issue then definitely watch it. If